Well, folks, <clears throat> good afternoon or good evening, whatever uh, mode you happen to be in. Um, welcome to another Crackerjack edition of the uh, Bill Crane Report with my friend Dwayne Weiss. Hey there. And um, we are going to uh, astound you with the variety of uh, stuff we have. Something to talk for everybody today. All ages. And by the way, you know, the kids, the teenagers, the 12 year olds, they love us too. Yeah. I mean, they think we're swell. <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. I was hoping I'd get them to send money, but it hasn't worked yet. Um, Dwayne, we got some serious subjects to deal yep. with. So, right off the bat, what is going on in Venezuela? Well, I think, and I don't know, I can't remember his name. The um, Mad Maduro. No, Mad Maduro's the the bad boy there. Uh, um, okay, the, um, the challenger. I forgot his name. I don't have a uh, Guaido. Juan Guaido. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And he supposedly has um, defeated Nicolas uh, Maduro in a very, very rigged election. Oh, absolutely. That thing was, that was just bogus from the day one, the yep. get-go. So right now we're in a spot where um, the military is backing Maduro. So far, yep. That's, so far. Yep. And the people want the other guy. The other guy, right. Uh, Guido. Um, and therein lies the tale. Yeah. And all of the civilized countries. Oh, yeah, lined up behind uh, yeah, the other guy. Are backing Guido. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's only a couple like Cuba, uh, Russia. Or Russia and China. And China that um, um, have their own selfish interests. Well, uh, that's what it is. It's, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. And, it's, uh, it's, and also the fact Venezuela has got one hell of a pile of oil. Is it? Yeah, it's supposedly one of the largest yeah. reserves in Absolutely, the world. Absolutely, yeah. But, you know, it's like anything else. If you get a 20 or a 25 or a 30-year-old car, mm -hmm. it, you, you don't know how to maintain it. The damn yeah. thing has fallen apart. Well, that's their oil uh, production, really. Their rigs are uh, terrible. they Keep them and, together with chewing gum and bailing oh yeah, wire. Yeah. And the other thing with the Venezuelan oil, I, I don't know much about oil, but I know there's different kinds of oil. Yep. Uh, the Venezuelan oil is difficult to refine. And so that's why they're not having their own refinery thing. So it's still, it's still, right, it's still actually going to uh, Louisiana and the refineries yep. there to, yep. because they can refract it properly. Yep. They've got, they got to knock it down a few yeah. times. Um, it's... Uh, I guess that's what they refer to as sour oil. Yeah, I think that's Sweet it. Sweet oil, sour yeah. oil, and there's light and dark, and all sorts of things like that. It's high sulfur uh, content. According to the, the Wall Street Journal today, an editorial that, you know, they call it, was there going to be a coup, not going to be a coup? They said there's not much chance of anything happening unless he can convict, convince the military to back him. Well, that's it. Because they don't have, there's nobody, they don't have any, any force other than the people in the street. Nobody's and this Maduro, he, he don't really give a damn what, what the people say. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they'd have, they'd have strung him up a long time ago. And they've even taken out, uh, every day in the Wall Street Journal, there's the, the currency report. And how many, uh, uh, to the dollar, to the dollar, dollar yeah. the other way. And they have quit listing Venezuela. Yeah. And at the last point, it was almost 400,000, 420,000 peso type to one U.S. dollar. Yeah. No, nobody wants to touch it. No, and no. It's worthless. Um, well, you know, I wonder how this is all going to end up playing out. Yeah, that's a good question. You know, we've, we've had a, a reputation over the years of meddling in South America. The CIA shooting oh, dictators and presidents and stuff. Yeah. It's interesting to see what's going to happen now, what our, our posture is going to be. Yeah. The only thing that now we got quite a bit of West, we got a lot of Western banking, we got a lot of backing, particularly in South America and the North America. The only thing only anybody's missing right now is Mexico and they're just keeping their mouth shut. Yeah, they're just playing dumb. Yeah. Well, 
They've got a reputation. Look at they did World War II. They were, uh, why are you getting involved? Um, well, I'll tell you, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, this whole thing, and the people are starving to death. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They have no food. Friends of ours came back yesterday from Aruba. And they said, it's still, it's, it's crazy on the weekends. They said, the Venezuelans are coming over. They, they'll, Monday morning, you go into the supermarket. There's no toilet paper. There's no paper towels. There's no dish soap. There's no soap. There's no, all basics. They buy up everything the supermarket's got and go back home. Because they can't get it there. This, I don't think, is going to end well. No. The only way this could end well would be if the military just moved in, took um, Maduro, and uh, I wouldn't even imprison them. Uh, you know, if they took him out and shot him, that would, if you put him in prison, he's still alive. Yeah, he's They gonna, can still rally exactly. around him. Um, yeah, but once uh, he's removed permanently, um, and then they have to face up with what to do with the people. If the military do that, military got to figure out how the hell to pay them, uh, to, to feed these people. Yeah, and that is a problem. There's no medicine. There's uh, nothing. Nothing. There's nothing on that yeah. island, and the military can't do a bloody thing, except plead for help. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? That may be the best outcome you could hope for, but Maduro has got to go. There's just no excuse for that because Venezuela, not only oil, they've got a lot of other natural resources. Um, they, they could have a tremendous agricultural uh, profile. They've got a wonderful climate. Look at next door, Argentina. Yeah. Hey, God almighty, beef and fruit and vegetables. and. Um, I mean, they could, you know, under the <coughs> right set of circumstances, mm -hmm. uh, become a... Uh, Destination for vacationers. Oh, positively. Uh, there's so much they've got going. They've been blessed with a very temperate climate. Uh, and, as you say, natural resources. They're out of the hurricane belt. Yep. So they, that's not a yeah, problem. That's there. a blessing. Well. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens. It, so, this is not over by any means. No, this is just ramping up yeah. now. So. Will, in your estimation, will the U.S. get involved? Overt or covert? Well, all right, let me put it this way. Today, there are Russian paramilitary mm -hmm. in there to support Maduro. Of course. Um, I believe there's also Cuban military in there. Now, if we decide to act... Um, brazenly and openly, mm -hmm. we have to deal with them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So that could be the spark that sets off plenty of excitement. Yeah. I, Covertly, um, I, I think believe... We really, I believe we really are covertly. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Um, and I believe that that's the only way we could do anything. Mm -hmm. We'll get blamed for it. Even if we yeah. don't do anything, we'll get blamed for that's it. That's right. We're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't there. This, um, oh, in this era of um, political correctness, I am tempted to skip over this analogy, but this could be another tie baby that we get stuck to. Oh, yeah. Just like old Br'er Rabbit, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, Venezuela could really backfire on us. However, Venezuela's got a lot of ties to the U.S. through oil. Yes, they do. Uh, they better be careful if they um, can't judge properly as to what side of their toast is buttered. Mm -hmm. um, they think the Russians are going to bail them out. They get another thing coming. Yeah, Russia's a, uh, Russia and China, either one of them, they're in any place they go or anything they do, they're in it for Russia or China. There is no other motivation for them whatsoever. None. 
If you think they're going in there for humanitarian reasons, you're bad, sadly mistaken. Yeah, we do that. Well, on the surface. Sometimes. We yeah. yeah. But we're better about it than they are. Yeah. They're in there to exploit people. That's all. Well, all right. Um, going along here, uh, I'm going to skip this little story, uh, and I'm going to skip it a second time. I got a couple of things here I want to talk to you about. Survivors mark... Auschwitz liberation. Yesterday. Mm-hmm. 127.45. That's right. Um, and they are marking the uh, liberation of Auschwitz. And this is the death camp of death camps, if you will. Uh, second worst one in the whole thing. Yep. It was the worst one in Poland. Um, was Treblinka? Was that the Treblinka? Yeah, yeah. one of them was Treblinka just a... was there. Sobibor was there. Yeah, but uh -huh. um, this one, uh, well, I, you know, it's tough. But uh, they this they don't really have a good number for um, the number of uh, people that were executed there. Kind of jumps all over the place, but it's. At least a million. Oh, yeah. It, it, I don't think there's any question about that. Yeah. Now, the Poles <laughs> are upset um, with this in that the rest of the world doesn't also mourn the 70,000 Poles yeah. that were killed over there. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a little short-sighted, but... I think I'm finally getting to my point here. Anti-Semitism, the hatred of the Jews, is alive oh, and well in Europe, in Poland especially. Oh, no question about in it. In France. Yep. Um, so tell me something. Yep. What is behind this hatred of the Jews by the Europeans? I don't know. I, I, uh, if I had to guess, and this is so simplistic, it's, it's terrible, but jealousy. You see a, a bunch of people, a group of people, a bunch is not a good word, a group of people that are historically were merchants, successful business people, made money, were well to do, and then you got the the the, the people that didn't have it, and they say the peasants. Yeah, look at these guys. They got he owns a and to own a shop at some place in a, in Europe at one point was that was a big deal. You know, you might be a serf or a peasant over here, and pretty soon you see they are living well. They got this. They're dressed nice. You know, how come with this? Oh, it's them Jews again. They yeah. got everything. Yeah, I mean they were tailors. Yep. Yeah. Um, they were jewelers. Yeah, oh, yeah. Shopkeepers. Shopkeepers, meat cutters, mm -hmm. um, merchants of uh, yep. all kinds of household goods. Um, they knew how to make a buck. That's right. And, and they're hard workers. Yep. And I think that brought in a lot of, a lot of dissension and a lot of hate. And that was over generation after generation. Generation after yeah. generation after exactly. generation. Yep. Um, you're right. Uh, I tend to agree with you. Um, and what happens is the have-nots look at the haves and say, it's not fair. This yep. is our country. Why should the, the Jews have what they have in my country when I'm still trying to grind out a living, exactly. um, growing potatoes and it's cabbages? All, it's and, always somebody else's fault that you don't have something. That's right. Yeah. So it's easy to blame them. Again, but you nailed it. You said they were successful. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a lot of reasons for it. Mm -hmm. They work hard. Oh, yeah. They're it, intelligent. It, it, it's, uh, they understand the value of education. No, I'm not Jewish, but I got a Jewish name. But we, when we moved east, the apartment complex that we lived in in Ohio was a lot of Jewish people. 
and uh, the really good friends upstairs, we met them when they were the Levitsons. And because we didn't know anybody, we met them, became friends with them. We became friends with their friends and got into that whole circle. And they, the friends used to say, they'd introduce us, and they said, this guy's name's Weiss, but he's not Jewish. And they get out of here. He can't be. <laughs> but in the Midwest, there's, there's pages of us. Oh, yeah. None of us are Jewish. But here, almost all Jewish. No, there is not. Uh, unfortunately, a man from Walpole just died last week. I saw his obituary, and he wasn't Jewish. Maybe um, maybe not religious Jew, but he might have been, been an ethnic Jew. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, there's a reason. But that, nonetheless. But anyway, so we used to talk about, you know, being Jewish and not being Jewish. And, and Mel would say, for example, and the other people do it, growing up, their parents expected them to do well in school. It wasn't, what do you mean you got a C minus or a D? That, that's not going to fly. You best get them grades up. You know? And they're always expected to, to perform we, um, back in Walpole High School, we had a couple of Jewish kids in Walpole High. They weren't allowed to go out after school and play. Mm -hmm. Nope. Work. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they work hard. They realize also when they go to college. Yep. They work hard. Oh, you bet. <laughs> yeah. No, never mind frat parties and all that stuff. Grades are important. Absolutely. Because you can take over dad's business one day. Mm -hmm. Or as dad's business enlarges, you're going to get a piece of it or whatever. And a lot so, of my clients, especially when I moved here, the industrial supplies, the industrial places were Jewish. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a, Monica thinks I'm crazy. I take the globe in, I open it up, and I, I start, I just look at the pictures or look at the names down there. And every so often I said, oh my God, there's... Saul, somebody, I said, I called on him for 10 years, and he, he passed away And this one. Because we're, we're all getting to that age, but yeah. these guys were a little older, and now they're all, they're all go, passing on. The last job I had was a job I hated. Um, and this fellow hired me, and um, I used to sell actuation. Valve actuation, mm -hmm. stuff that would make valves open and close automatically. High-tech stuff back in those days. Uh, he wanted me to go around to, and he had 200 distributors around the country. I mean, some of them were nickel diamonds, but he'd set anybody up for a $5,000 stock order. Mm -hmm. But um, he had a couple of hundred around the country. He wanted me to go to each and every one and teach them how to put uh, actuators on valves, his valves, American mm -hmm. valve, and sell them. Mm -hmm. I said, Fred, I can't do it. Well, it, it's a long story, but he almost forced me to go to work for him for the amount of money he wanted to pay me. And finally, I gave up and said, you win, you bought me. But I was right. I couldn't get plumbing wholesalers that sold stupid little manual valves by the pound. They couldn't oh, get yeah. the they, concept of yeah, actuating yeah, them, let alone they didn't know who to talk to mm -hmm. in plants. They didn't know anything about going through engineering and getting the stuff spec'd. It was a fool's errand I was on, and it was destined to fail. I'm finally getting to the point. Um, plumbing wholesalers, for the most part, in the U.S., Jewish. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I don't doubt that at all. Yeah. Um, and, of course, Fred was Jewish, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I had some fascinating conversations. Um, after work, at night, um, having a couple of beers and dinner, um, I said, I asked this question many times. How, after what happened in Germany during World War II, how can you possibly own a Mercedes Benz I, I have asked or that, a BMW? I have asked that question also. Did you ever get a, a decent, decent answer? answer? No. 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 I would have thought that, given the history of what it was, 
they wouldn't have gone anywhere near a German car or a German product. But it wasn't that way. It wasn't that way. It One guy in New Jersey got mad at me for saying that. Ooh. He said, you don't understand what went on. He says, I wouldn't get within 20 feet of a Mercedes Benz. Yeah, yeah. I'm convinced there's little bombs in there that they're going to push a button someday and blow up every single Mercedes Benz that's in the hands of... Uh, see, I, 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 not that they're going to be little bonds, but to have that attitude, I, I can see that. I, th I would expect it more. I, I would, if I were Jewish, I would never have yep. touched one of those that's things. That's right. In fact, my friend Stanley Michowski, uh, the Polish prince, used to say, I'm not going to buy Japanese cars. He yep. said, they dropped bombs on my uncles during World War yep. II. Yep. Stanley still harbors that to this oh, day. Yeah, yeah. Last time I talked to him, I asked him. Sure. Um, the, um, my accounts assumed that I was Jewish. You know, my mama didn't raise no fool, so I went in there. <laughs> With a dill pickle in your pocket. Yeah. Right, yeah. So they would say something, you know, like the inside, something like, yep, just like that. <laughs> so, you know, I knew sometimes I was getting business over some other people because, well, you give it to the Jewish salesman here. <laughs> He's one of the tribe. One of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of them gave me, I got hell one day. I went into a large industrial distributor in Cambridge. And I walked in the door, and the guy, the owner, was his first name was Saul. And he, he looks at me and says, what are you doing here? I said, well, I got a sales meeting with all your reps tonight. And he started giving me a lecture. He says, don't you know this is Rosh Hashanah and it starts at 5 o'clock or something? And he says, you know, you ought to have more respect for your religion. He's giving me a, giving me a <laughs> crap about why I'm there. I'm not going to get home before sunset. And, you know, this, I said, oh, God, now what do I do? So I just said, yes, sir, yes, sir, and let him. Let him rant. I didn't dare at that point tell him I wasn't Jewish because we kind of assumed that way it was for the two or three years that I've been calling on him. Oh, jeepers. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I ran into awkward situations like that, too. Mm -hmm. I was uh, talking to a guy one day. and We had a line of uh, positioners. Uh, that we used that would accurately position the valve at a different spots when you needed it moved to different spots. And I, uh, I said, you know, we have a wonderful line of positioners. I said, it will fit on any valves you have in your plant. Oh, he says, no, he says, I buy, uh, and he named the brand. It was a good brand. He said, I buy blah, blah, blah positioners. I said, well, yeah, but you know what? I got some features in Benny's that are better than those. And he opened the drawer and he pulled out a photograph. And it was a scantily clad, beautiful young lady. Okay. He said, this is the salesman that calls on me. You got any benefits that top that? I said, point well taken. I hope you enjoy you your win. relationship. You win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, he was a hot ticket. Never bought anything, but he was a hot ticket. Um, all right, well, I'm not going to solve that problem. How about this school out in Ohio? Um, oh, Willard, come on. Um, there is a a school in Worthington, Ohio, uh, Lincoln, uh, let's see here, I'm trying to find the name of the school, but nonetheless, the, um, a, a teacher there started a course on radical political thought, mm -hmm. and they invite Oh, yeah, I did see that. Yeah. They invite uh, different they, radical activists to all present them. different uh, yep. opinions. Come in yeah. and spend an hour yeah. with my class. Yeah. And uh, it really, um, I guess it's Worthington High, uh, it's really catching on. And yeah. now I think in the, it's a, an elective, but I think over 50% 
of the uh, senior class chose to take it. I, I would have liked to have had a class like that. Yeah. But there's a danger there. There is indeed. Today, uh, disagreeing thoughts are not particularly welcome sometimes in academia. Well, you're right. But in this class, this class is it, to everything yeah. goes. Yep. I think this is a great thing. And it is absolutely 360 degrees from the politically correct oh, schools absolutely. of today. Yeah. Well, that, you can't say that. Yeah, oh, yeah, you can't even expose that. You can't that. even think that. That's right. Um, I think it's a great idea. Well, I do, too. Well, here's a little something of interest. A 37-year-old man, Corey Langan, um, must be quite a fellow. He went from Nebraska... Columbus, Nebraska. He drove 17 miles in the wrong direction. Oh my God! I saw on it. a highway in Connecticut, 395, 395 yeah. while intoxicated. They had to put down stop sticks yep. to deflate three of his tires, but they eventually stopped him and arrested him. Now, in all honesty, what the heck do you do with a guy like this? He endangered so many people's lives. Yep, that's right. I mean, if you give him uh, 60 days in the county jail and a $1,000 fine, that doesn't fit this crime. This is a no. horrible thing this idiot did. Oh, yeah. And we, we've had, we've have a problem with judicial system in... Results and intent. In this case, the result is he didn't kill anybody. So the people will, some of the liberals will say, "Well, gee, you how can you punish him? He didn't really hurt anybody. He, he had a you know a few cops chasing him and stuff like that." But that's not the case. But they want to look at it that way. I I look at the same thing that if he intent, there's intent there. If he knew that driving drunk was endangering somebody. I, to me, that's the same as hurting somebody. If you knew the going the wrong way on the highway, yeah. 395 with a speed limit of 65 or 70. Admittedly, he probably didn't know it when he got on it, but he knew damn well when he was drinking then he got in that car. Yeah, and he also knew after about three or four cars yeah, came out going wrong, that yeah. there was something wrong. And he could have pulled to the inside lane and off just the median. Yeah, and stopped. And stopped, yeah. And then turned around and somehow got himself going in the right or direction. Or just sit there but, until somebody comes and... Yeah. But uh, it, it's like the guy that goes into a, a convenience store and he's robbing a clerk and he shoots at the clerk and he misses. They give him to, for, you know, armed robbery or something. Hell, it should be attempted murder. It should be a murder because he only missed that guy because he's a poor shot. He they, intended to kill him. They, they, they sentenced him on the armed robbery and they yeah. waived the gun charges. They it, just, it just because he was charges. a bad shot. He, yeah. he pulled that trigger to kill that clerk. The fact that he was a poor marksman, well, that, that benefits the yeah. clerk, but it doesn't dissolve, resolve him of any, any blame. Intent. Yeah, that's right. If you intended to harm or kill the clerk. Yep, exactly. Bang. 12 to 15. Oh, 20 to 40. Yeah. Um, this is interesting. A letter to the editor of the Globe. I'll skip over some of it. Okay. We get to the Suffolk DA that's going to go easy on criminals. That um, piece of work. Yep. Yeah. It, seem, it seems to me... Uh, that today's Democrats are so hysterically upset with the current administration in Washington that they are willing to enable criminals yep. to re-enter their communities just to make a political statement. This kind of logic is flawed and dangerous. I live in Worcester County and don't have a vote in Suffolk County, but I believe that officials advocating for these decisions to let criminals stay in the country are not spending enough time considering the ramifications of their actions. Mr. Brian Burkwinkle of Clinton, I couldn't have said it better myself. That's right. 
I, I wonder what's in the water in, in that county that people would vote for that DA. She's a woman. She's black. Yeah, yeah. She's progressive. Kind of and this is what we love. Yeah. We want to move the party to the left. You know, my grandmother used to say, be careful what you wish for, you might get it. In this case, be careful who you vote for, you just might get them elected. Yeah, that's exactly. And that's exactly what right. happened here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, I, I, It's, 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 mind it's, it's mind blowing. It's, I, it's, it can't, is. I can't yeah. fathom that either. I, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. Um, well, June Cassidy from Westwood has an interesting article here. I congratulate Governor Baker on his desire to raise money to aid climate change programs. However, I don't think it's right to raise taxes only from new house sales. Although I have been a homeowner for 27 <laughs> oh, years geez, and hard. so would not have to pay the proposed new taxes, yeah. I feel this is unfair. <laughs> if we are to ameliorate the world's climate issues, we all need to contribute. Or at least we should make it a choice for those who want to help. Add an optional checkoff box on our income tax form or assess a small percentage to everyone above a certain pay level. I'm sure there are other ways. June, I, I wrote here, no taxation without representation. Well, another point, June, there's nothing in the world stopping you from taking out your checkbook and writing out a check, to a big check, to somebody that's involved in the uh, fighting global warming. Absolutely. And you had one point in your, your article there, that a box that you could check off if you want to come some of your extra tax. That's fine. But then you don't want to give it to, you don't want to mandatory it. If you feel that that's a cause, support it. God love you. Yep. And not only that, but I mean, we got another box too for gender. You can yeah. put an X in there. Uh, I'm neutral on gender. And I want to pay more on taxes, and That's I want right. to do this, and I want to do that. Oh, where's it all? Uh, somebody, I, I, I don't know who wrote it or who. It was one of these votes where this, the school was looking for a big override. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't here, but it was in the area. And somebody said, well, if you're so intent, and if it's, it's that serious, write them a big check. And if everybody that's, that wants this override gives out three or four hundred dollars, you got it. There's no problem at all. But you don't want that. You want everybody else to pay for this. There's a box, too, on the Massachusetts yep. uh, income tax form that says, uh, I want to be, uh, I don't want the, uh, my uh, uh, sales tax cut. I want to uh, keep mm -hmm. it at 650 yep. or whatever it was. 625. Yeah. It used to be, oh, be six. Yeah. And but, um, so I want to stay there. I want to pay the extra. Oh, yeah, I do, too. Mm. Yeah. Most I'd send him a check every once in a while. Yeah, just yeah. to keep him honest. Yeah. Right. So, voters in Texas prove Trump right. Well, he has been saying all along that some of these elections in this country are rigged. Two very interesting stories coming out of Texas. Um, Attorney General Ken Paxton announced that authorities have obtained evidence that voter fraud is taking place. On Friday, Paxton's office announced the Secretary of State's office discovered about 95,000 individuals identified by the Department of Public Safety as non-citizens have a matching voter registration record in Texas and roughly 58,000 of them have voted in one or more Texas elections. Not, not surprising. Any, uh, Paxton added, any illegal vote deprives Americans of their voice because there's 58,000 that are just, boom, yeah. off right. the rolls. A vote doesn't count. Um, and uh, there was one other... Oh, uh, 
found uh, this Public Interest Legal Foundation found that 1,046 non-citizens successfully registered to vote in eight Virginia counties. In Pennsylvania, 100,000 voter registration cards were sent not to register voters, but to those who had driver's licenses a legislative priority for Democrats in Massachusetts and other states. Well, that's why we've got to jump through hoops now with a new driver's license, yeah. because the old one was became worthless. Yeah. And, and as a result, President Trump is correct. Mm -hmm. Now, I suppose the um, Washington Times, or the uh, New York Times, Times yep. Chicago... Uh, Tribune are all going to say, "Oh, gee, Mr. President, while well, our face is red, you were right and we were wrong. That, we apologize." That's never going to happen. Never going to happen. Is no. right. Never. No, that'll never happen. Military buys local. Boost for Maine. The uh, finally, the uh, military. Footwear. Yep, yep, is uh, is buying their footwear. From New Balance. Yep. Up in, uh, do it, they're making it in their main. Is that uh, where they're making them? Yeah. Up in, uh, oh, jeepers. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, Nor Norwich Walk, Maine. Um, and uh, they, yeah. uh, they'll be making uh, seven, let's see. They want to contract for up to 398,000 units. Oh, wait a minute now. Time out. Uh, the order can be expanded to 248,000 uh, sneakers. Yep. And there's two other uh, companies also, uh, San Antonio Shoe and um, Proper International. It took uh, a long time. It did. Uh, most of the, the, they had a buy U.S., for the military stuff, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be fatigues or hats or whatever it was. When it came to shoes, particularly athletic shoes, they kept using the excuse they weren't available. That's mm -hmm. why we had to go to uh, Nike or whoever was making them overseas. Yeah. And for years, I know at least three years, New Balance has been screaming, what do you mean you're not available? We can, we can do that. And now they found out there's a couple more companies. It took a long time. And I th it took Trump to get into the administration before they'd even consider it. Before this, they didn't even consider the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And he said, we're going to buy American. Yep. And that was the end of it. Well, that, that's crazy. The, oh, the it, U.S. military to buy shoes made in, in China. Absolute, that's total, line. complete madness. Yep. Um, well, this is my favorite story of the day. Right here. Well, how about this picture of this fellow on the hood of the car? I saw that driving. just before I came over here on the news. Yep. We had a fellow. We had road rage. We had these two. I don't think either one of them is any brain surgeon. No, they're not. They're not. Menses. And so they got into a big fight over a scrape. Their cars scraped. So the old guy, and I believe he was uh, 65 years 65? old, okay. jumped in front of this 37-year-old guy's car and wouldn't move. Yeah. So the guy started to rev up and he started to go at him and stop and go at him and stop. The old fellow jumped on the hood of the car, held on right there on that uh, uh, projection where the yeah, uh, windshield wipers, wipers were recessed, yep. had a good hand grip, and this guy drove down the highway at speeds up to 70, 70 miles an hour yep. and slamming on the brakes trying to, and swerving, trying to knock the old guy off. He held on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's... Well, other citizens, not cops, other citizens saw yep. what was going on, and they boxed this car and pulled this car over. And a guy with a gun permit, a civilian with a permit to carry, got out. That was a gun for G-U-N. G-U-N. In this state. Yeah. Uh, and walked up and said, that's it. Yep. Sit still. You're waiting here for the cops. <laughs> the yeah. news today, they said 
they're not going to arrest or, or find the guy with the gun. Well, what are you talking about? The How guy's could gonna, they? You probably saved somebody's life here. Probably saved two, three, four people's yeah. lives if this turned into a multi-car accident. I mean, he did the right thing. Thing. He should get a bloody medal. The fact that they, somebody would even consider that he broke the law doing yeah. that. Well, you know, his life wasn't in danger. He yeah. could argue it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, come it, on. It, it's, we're nuts. We are nuts. And you get two knuckleheads like this. that. Yep. Uh, they kind of deserve each other. They really and truly do. Yep. I mean, uh, the, this Fitzgerald, uh, 37 years old, is a jerk. And the old guys know better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I just... So um, they ought to lock them up in adjoining cells and they can scream at each other all day. Now, Tom Brokaw. Remember Tom Brokaw? Oh, yeah. Very well. Yeah, newscaster. Well, he sp- had a. It was on TV, I think. Um, and he was talking about immigration. Mm-hmm. And he said. Um, they were talking about Hispanics. Uh, and I guess that somehow or other they got to assimilation. And he said, the Hispanics got to work harder to assimilate. They've got to learn the language. Yeah. Well, he got bombarded. And he had to issue a statement. Sorry if I offended anyone. He spoke the truth. He, he very much did. Assimilation is, is the key to uh, uh, immigration and to blend in to your host country, the country that you move to. And there are certain groups that do not assimilate well. The uh, Muslim groups, Muslims do not. Chinese. Chinese don't assimilate well. Uh, Hispanics, a lot of them areas do not assimilate, assimilate well. Yeah. You saw that years ago already when they ca- the Cubans came over. And they settled in Miami, and they called that area Little Cuba because they all gathered in that little enclave, and they were always they were all stuck together, their own businesses, their own language, everything else. Well, the, nothing's going to change unless you assimilate. Yeah, there's a part of uh, Tampa, Ybor City, I think it is. Yep. Uh, that's all Cubans. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the Cubans, though, when you consider they've come over here only recently, like the last fifty or seventy-five years. They've done a pretty good job of fitting in. And oh, yeah. Many of them are wealthy. They're hard workers. Oh, there's no question about that. Yep. They're, they're, they're very, very productive people. Now, we have another story. Uh, this fellow, and I didn't get, this was on WBZ Radio. Um, it was on the news. And um, he runs a bakery. Mm-hmm. And he did Valentine cookies. And one said something like, uh, love and kisses from, you know, your boy or something. Another one said something silly like that, too. Mm -hmm. And one of them said, build the wall. Oh, my God. Well. Somebody wanted to went crazy over that. Yep, they did. And the commentator that was reading this quoted a woman uh, that said, there's a lot of hatred coming from that bakery. Oh, it's immediately, it's hatred. Hatred. The one this morning said something about wearing a, the letter to, uh, to the editor, if you wear a hat that says, you know, make America great, that's a sign of hate. 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 You're not proud of your country. Oh, no, 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 that's hate. No. Yeah. You they, want, they, you, 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 they throw that word around. Yeah. Just, used to be racist. Now it's hate. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, all right. Uh, how about this guy down in Gonzales, Louisiana? By the way, I know where Gonzales oh, that is character. up in there. It's, That's the one that... that yep. Yeah. Uh, killed five people. Five people, yeah. 21 years old. And was on his way to Virginia to kill his grandmother. Yeah. The cops just at the same time went to the grandmother's house. She was afraid he was going to show up. Well, actually, they went there on a wellness check. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. They were sitting in the yard when he pulled in. They recognized the car. There had been a bolo out all over the southeast mm-hmm. for that car. Cop pulls out his gun, walks over, arrests him. Hello. 
Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're near us. Yeah. Well, talk about lucky. I'll tell you. Wow. Well, he's. Uh, I suspect it's, he's going back to Ascension Parish, booked on two counts of first degree murder, home invasion, and illegal use of weapons. And then uh, they'll get him for the other three. Yeah, I think they probably got extradited him for yeah, that. Yeah, I, uh, I think it's a different county. Yeah. Yeah. Safe to say, when you do that down in Louisiana, the chances are you're not going to get paroled. Chances are very good you're not going to get yeah. paroled. Um, the, uh, it's crazy. You know, there's stuff that happens. That, that, and you can't say, well, it's, again, it's the gun. It's not the gun in any of these cases. Um, you've had guns. I've got guns. I don't have them here anymore, except air rifles. But uh, I never had it because I had a gun that is going to shoot somebody, and nobody that I know of ever had. Nobody that I ever know of wanted to shoot no. anybody. No, jeepers! You're there to protect. It's there to protect your family and yourself. No. One time we were at Monica's brother's, youngest brother's house, and sitting in the kitchen, he's got a cabinet in the hallway there. It's got a glass front on it. And I looked at it, and I said, it was 14 shotguns and rifles in that cabinet. And there was probably a half a dozen handguns in the bottle. Yeah. I said, William, I said, if you had this in Massachusetts, the news came in and saw this, I got a SWAT team would be banging on your door because you have to be some kind of a terrorist or something crazy. Enough. To have. Not. He said, "Why?" He says, "Everybody's got stuff like this." I said, "Not in Massachusetts because they not go crazy. They go crazy over And this. not in New York. No, New York. Upstate New York, though, is a different story. Yep. Not in New Jersey, but any place where human beings live, they can think for themselves. Yeah. If a guy's got a half a dozen shotguns, so what? He can only use one at once. Yeah, what, what's, right. he, what's he going to do? Fire all fourteen off at once at people? It's ridiculous. Um, well, so remember, you remember President Obama, don't you? Vaguely. The nightmare years. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, remember he was battling ISIL. Yep. Yeah. I got something here that relates to that. Yeah. Uh, um, well, the ISIS caliphate is now down to six square miles. I saw that, too. They're looking at two to four weeks, and ISIS will be no more. Yep. Isn't it amazing when a new president comes in and clarifies the rights of engagement, how you will comport yourself, yep. sets out a mission, and says to the military, do it. A good example of that we saw when Ronald Reagan was elected. Iran was holding, I think, what, 400 and how many hostages? It was in the hundreds. Or they, they, were had for, they had a bunch of them. They were held for 444 days. That's yeah, where I got that's it. That's it. Was, it's like, I don't know, 92? Yeah, yeah well, it doesn't, the number uh, yeah. really doesn't matter. The, the point is, if you remember, folks, Carter negotiated and they laughed at him. They laughed at him. And Reagan said, if I'm elected and they're not released, there's going to be a bunch of crispy critters in that desert. Do you know when they got released? Five minutes after he took the oath. They were like, hey, goodbye. They, they were afraid that he just might do it. And he got done. He finished what Carter couldn't do in two or three years. That's right. Um, three years, yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah, it, it's... You know, when you put a man on the job, yeah, uh, a guy that understands what he has to do and has the courage of his convictions, things get done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And speaking of Obama, uh, the Wall Street Journal's got an article. What if the FBI had probed Obama with Iran? I mean, he would be probably in jail. Skids full of money. Yeah, I know. Uh, just... Back, back uh, channels, yeah. making deals behind, uh, supplying them with stuff to go on around the, the sanctions. All kinds of stuff. Here, here's a whole list of, I don't want to put it, it's just the fact that, that this probe with the Russia is minor league, what Obama was doing in, 
with everybody in Iran, including John Kerry. They were all involved in this. <laughs> you know, if Saturday Night Live really looked at the Obama administration yeah. and just replicated everything they did, it would be funnier than anything they could write, except that it was so stupidly tragic. He was working with trafficking networks that were employed by Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are known terrorist groups he was yeah. dealing with. Yeah. You're not dealing with them, he's dealing for them. Yeah. Yeah, they said the administration had a habit of leaking through Hezbollah news of Israeli strikes. And so the, the Israelis knew exactly what was going to happen because his administration was releasing all this information on these back channels. But yeah. do you, you think that he doesn't come for any criticism today? No, nothing. Oh, my God, no. That Obama administration was so anti-Israel and so anti-British that... Uh, it's unbelievable. John Kerry's, what was her, daughter's husband was Iranian born, and he was involved in all this. Can you imagine the Democrats? Five. S Secretary of State. Yep. Kerry? Yep, that's the man. Mrs. Clinton and Albright. Um, Absolute incompetence, incompetence squared, and uh, incompetence square rooted, I guess. Oh. Unbelievable. I, you couldn't find three worse Secretary of States oh if you God. tried. Uh, hey. oh. John Kerry was flawed from day one. Of course he was. Yep. Uh, unbelievable. All right, let's Please. see here. Um, Actually finished one folder. Amazing. Um, how about, well, here's an interesting story. So I'm sitting at the, in the power seat at home, and uh, Tim Tebow was on the oh, tube yeah. uh, with his girlfriend and uh, showing his $750,000 diamond engagement ring. And I said, look at that, Suze. Works she, for me. She goes, wow, what a ring. And wow, he's getting engaged to a girl. Is that allowed? <laughs> yeah. ay, ay, ay. La last night, that Rent was on. The, the musical was put on TV last oh, night. Oh, okay. And she wanted to watch it. I said, okay, go ahead. It's not 10 or 15 minutes in there, and it's two girls kissing. I said, well, that's enough of that. I said, well, I could have told you what that was about. She said, well, I thought it was just about rent. I said, no, it's a, it's a LBG, whatever it was. Yeah. They, they didn't call it that, but it was a total gay, lesbian. And she said, oh, my God. I said, well, I could have told you, but you'd argued, and you turned it on anyway. So. Sometimes you just gotta let them go ahead and watch it. Do it. Um, the it's a Quinnipiac poll out that says fifty four percent of those polled say the wall crisis is a national emergency. Yep. And Harvard Harris or Harris Harvard, right. I'm not sure which it is, has a poll out that um, says. 80% of the people in the U.S. want a secure border. border. Oh, absolutely. I think. Um, you know. You have to be a fool not to. Um, I have another, another quote here. Doug Schoen is on Fox News quite often. Yep. He's a, a former Democratic strategist, mm -hmm. and I guess he still is. But he's a little different than most Democrats. He's got common sense. He, I wrote this down. Diversity is okay, but not at the risk of orderly running of business. Good point. That's and he also referred to Maxine Waters and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez as irritants and gadflies, or socialists interested only in the redistribution of wealth. 
Good point. Yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Do you know, uh, I'm all for uh, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, talking more. Uh, in fact, if she was on TV 24 hours a day, it would be fine with me yep. because that way she will expose herself in all her thought processes for everybody to see. Yep. Oh, and that'll be, and she'll be all over in about four days. Oh, yeah. It, it, you know, to give them enough rope to hang themselves. Yep. Yep. Um, okay, friends, I uh, have some bad news for you. Uh, I think we have come to the end of our rope here. We're pretty close. Um, and we got the uh, a cut signal from our crack producer. Um, and uh, we're being told that that's it. So, friends, that's the bad news. The good news is we'll be back with more before you know it. Stay warm. Stay warm, and it's going to be colder than the blazes for the next few days. Yep. So, bundle up. Take good night. Care.